Welcome to another Tech Help with Richard Ross, brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about string concatenation. I've gotten a lot of emails about this over the years, and one particular in our Facebook group today by Brent. And it's about string concatenation and putting fields together, putting strings together in VBA, when to use single quotes, when to use double quotes, double double quotes, and so on. And I talk about this in a lot of my different lessons. I'll put links in the description below. But it is something that comes up quite a lot in my classes, and uh, students ask me about it all the time. And it can be confusing until you get the hang of it. So here's Brent's question. He says, I'm sure this is a simple question. I hope there are others that are with me, and maybe you have discussed it in your lessons in great detail, and I just am not grasping it. I seem to struggle with all this concatenation and getting the right amount of quotation marks. When I am tailoring something I learned in class, but it's not exactly the same, I run into problems because I need to remove info, and somewhere I am not putting in or removing enough quotes or placing the ampersands in the right place. I have been with these classes for years now, and I still cannot grasp this concept. Is there a tutorial, or can you make a short detailed tutorial really explaining out these quotes and how to work with them? I am probably missing something very simple to turn that light bulb on. Tonight I was going back over Developer 3 Lesson 4, and where the do command.run SQL statement is, it's really throwing me for a loop. Any help would be life saving. Well, don't feel bad, Brent. You're not alone. I get lots and lots of people that ask me the same question. So let's take a minute and run through the basic concatenation and I'll, I'll throw in some tricks and some techniques and maybe watching it again in a different context will turn that light bulb on. All right, first things first, go and watch this concatenation tip. It's on my website. It's, it's pretty old, it's from 2008, but all the concepts are still, are still perfectly valid. Um, there's the link for it. I'll put the link down in the description below the video so you can click on it. Rewatch that before continuing on with this video. I'll, I'll recover some of the concepts basically and briefly, but that gives you the, the, the basic beginner information on how to concatenate two fields together. Okay, there's a couple different ways to concatenate. First thing is, if you want to put fields together from a table, like first name and last name, we're gonna use a query to do that. Real simple query. Here's first name, here's last name. We'll create a query, create, query design, bring in the customer table. Okay, now if I put first name and last name down here in the query by themselves, they show up as separate fields. If you want to put them together in another field, you use string concatenation. It looks like this, full name, that's the name of the field you want to create, colon, first name, ampersand, last name. That ampersand throws together two fields or two other bits of information. If I run this now, you can see they're together, but there's no space between them. If you want to add literal characters in here, you have to put the, the string of text inside of quotes. So a simpler example of putting, instead of putting these two together, let's say you want to say Mr. and then first name. So out in front of first name, inside of quotes, Mr. period space quote. That's a string of characters, MR period space, that I want to put in front of first name. How do I put them together again? The ampersand, that's the concatenation operator. All right, run it. Now I've got Mr. Joe, Mr. Sue, Ms. Bill. And of course, you'd want to use an if function or something to look and see if it's male or female or whatever you want to do. But the, the point here is the concatenation. All right, forget the gender. So now instead of putting Mr. in front of first name, I want to make it first name space last name. So after first name, ampersand, what am I putting in here? Quote, space, quote. All right, and those are double quotes. All right, I'm, not, I'm zoomed out a little bit. All right, those are double quotes ampersand last name. That's how you put first name and last name together. All right, if you want to go last name, first name, you could do the same trick, right? Last first is the name of the field we're creating. Last name, ampersand, quote, comma, space, quote, that's an actual string of characters, and first name, just like that. Run it, and there you go. Yeah, it gets more complicated if they've got multiple names in the field and all that stuff. But this is the, these are the basics. Now the double double quotes and the single quotes come in. Well, we're, we're gonna forget single quotes for now. Save single quotes for later when you're working with SQL, which I'll talk about in a minute. For now, let's talk about the double double quotes. Let's get rid of this stuff here real quick. All right, delete and delete. Let's say I want to create a field in here called greeting. 
All right, and the greeting is going to be inside of quotes. She said, hello, Brent, like that. That's the greeting. Now, every field should get the same, the same bit of text. All right, there you go. She said, hello, Brent. Now, if I want to replace Brent with the actual first name of the character, get rid of it inside of here, and then concatenate it on the end. First name, like that. She said, hello, Sue. She said, hello, Joe, and so on. Now, what if you want to make this perfect? So let's go back to hello, Brent. What if you want to make this perfect grammar where there's actually quotes inside of the greeting itself? If you want to have quotes inside of an actual string, you have to use double, double quotes. All right. So I want this to display. She said, quote, hello, Brent. So that double quote is going to turn into a quote inside of there. So let's take a look at what we got. See, she said, and then the quotes are now displayed in the results. Hello, Brent. And of course we need one on the end now. This is where it gets a little confusing. You have to put a double, double quote inside there. Like that. Let me pop it up in Notepad, it's easier to see. Yeah, I can zoom in the video, but it's just easier to use Notepad. All right, greeting. She said, hello, Brent. See how these turn into quotes inside of a string of text. That's when you need the double, double quotes to put an actual quote character there. Okay, now it's gonna get even more complicated because now we wanna replace Brent with the actual first name field. So now we have to end the string here and then begin it again over there. So this is how it goes. Close the string there and first name and open the string back up again and just get rid of Brent. See that? That's what it looks like. And then run it. See? She said, hello, Joe. So let me put this in Notepad so you can get a good look at it. There it is in Notepad. I know this all looks crazy, but this is how it has to go. Right? The evolution is, right, she said, Hello, Brent, like that. Oh, well, they got a comma in there, okay? All right, so the first the first thing you have to do is treat this whole thing like a string, all right? So that all has to go inside of quotes. Then you have to replace these guys with double quotes. Then you have to get rid of this and put the field name in there. It's just substitution. Do it one step at a time if it's, if it's confusing for you. All right, let's see how this works in VBA. It's very similar. Um, I'm not gonna say that query. All right, let's make a little form. Create, form design. Let's make this guy bring up the properties here. Let's base this on my customer table. Let's bring in some existing fields. We just need first name and last name. Resize this a little bit. Give it a splash of color. You guys know how I work. I can't deal with these, these blank white forms. All right, let's throw a command button and a basic Let's put uh, another text box down here for our results. Get rid of that. I'll call this, let's see here. I'll call this my results. And if you don't know how what I'm doing here, you gotta watch my beginner VBA lessons, all right? I'm just throwing down a basic text box to get some stuff. What stuff is gonna be determined by this command button that I click? I'm gonna cancel the wizard, and I'm gonna just put the word go in here like that. That's gonna do our stuff. What stuff is it gonna do? Well, let's right click on it, build event, code builder. And here's my VB window right there. I'll put it right over here. Actually, I got my resolution so high now I can work on this stuff side by side for you. Ooh, I like this. I'm not used to being able to do this. In my older videos, I used to have a much, much smaller window. I just, just started working with high def a little while ago. Tried to keep the video sizes small, but everyone's got high-speed internet nowadays, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. All right, so what's the button gonna do? All right, results equals first name and a space and last name. Just like that. Save it. Save the form as whatever. Customer F. All right, let's switch back to form view. Go. There we go. See, I click on the button. 
it generates this code, results equals first name and a space and a last name. And there we go, last name. You wanna switch it around, same thing, last name and quote, comma, quote, like that, and first name. And then go, see? There's our VBA. Wanna do the she said result thing again? All right, let's do she said. So, she said, hello, Brent, like that. All right, go. So all I get is she said, hello, Brent. Let's replace Brent with first name. All right, so do it in steps if you want to. All right, so get rid of that, hello, and first name. So we replaced the actual word Brent with the first name field. See, she said, hello, Joe. And if you change to a different record, she said, hello, Sue. Okay, now let's put in the actual quote characters. So the, the opening quote's gonna go right here, right in front of hello. It's gotta be a double, double quote like that. See, there's my opening quotation. It's inside the string value. We have to add some stuff to the end of this string to put the closing quote in there. So after first name, tack on some more stuff. What's gonna be the stuff here? Now, if I just put like that, I'm gonna get actual X's. That's some stuff to go at the end. See that? But I don't want X's there. I want a period and another quote. So let's just start with the period. There's the period. Okay, now after that period, I'm gonna stick in another double quote, which is gonna go like that. See? You just gotta remember, these guys replace the single quote, or the double quote, inside of a string value. Now you can use single quotes too if you want. You can use a single quote like that, all right? And this one here would replace that one. If that's what you want, if that's okay, then go ahead. This comes into play, this is easier to, to conceptualize when you're working with SQL, because you can get away with these in SQL. But if you want true English, right? True wording like that. And this will come in, in handy if, if you're writing letters, and you want to put this kind of stuff inside of your, um, your, your reports for printing out. You can also build these things, if you're not comfortable doing this all in one line like this, you can build these in pieces. You can go like she said, like that, or like, like that. She said, all right, now you get that. Now you just tack on to results, right? Results equals results, and you want to put your quote in there, like that. See? Oops, results. That's the one thing I love about Access VBA is it'll capitalize for you, see? Now I get the extra quote in there, see? Results equals results and put the quotation mark in there. All right, what's next? Results equals results and uh, hello, oh, hello. Like that, all right? See, do it again. Results equals results and first name. See, and then we're gonna close it up with results equals results and period close quotes like that there's a whole bunch of concatenation for you you can build the same field if you want to or you can do it in a memory variable right you can you can dim yourself an s up top here all right dim s as a string maybe this is all stuff i cover in my basic vba classes all right then you can make this s you can manipulate S all the way down. And at the very end, just say results equals S. Same results, haha. <laughs> Let's try something with a basic SQL statement. Now I've got an SQL basics tutorial on YouTube. It's, uh, I'll put a link to it in the description below the video. Watch that if you haven't done any SQL. You can use SQL statements to manipulate the data in a form, report, whatever. So let's say we want to programmatically change the data in here. I already ran one. You can see it's down to record one of one. So here's an example. Let's say um, S equals select all fields from customer T. All right, like that. And then I'm going to say me dot record source. Source. Sorry, I can't type today. Me dot record source equals S. All right, and then just to put something in the box, results equals done. All right, what this does, boom, 
is it now you see one of three records down here. I said select all records from customer T. All right, and if you scroll through there, you can see them all. All right, if I want to add some kind of a limitation on here, right, a criteria, I can say select all records from customer T where first name equals Joe, like this. Run it, and now I'm getting a parameter value. All right, why is that? Well, because Access thinks that Joe is a field. So what we have to do is we have to put Joe in here as a text string, which requires, guess what? These guys. I don't want first name equaling a field name Joe. I want first name equaling the actual text Joe. Now when I run it, you can see this as one of one down here. I'm only seeing that one record. Now here's where the single quotes come in. You can actually get away with doing this because with programming sometimes those double double quotes get a little confusing. Click and it's then the same results come in here. All right, so with SQL, feel free to use the single quotes. I don't because some other versions of SQL don't allow this and some do. So it's hard to keep track of which is which. I personally like to use the double double quotes. All right, now this is again where it becomes a little crazy. If you want to use a variable in here, let's say, um, let's see, we're already using this field here. Let's let's make another variable, dim fn as a string, and up here I'm going to say fn equals Joe. All right, so I've already I've made a variable and I've set the value equal to fn. So now I want to replace Joe with fn. Well, I can't just put fn in there, okay? Because it's not going to know what it is. If I run it now, I get nothing, all right? Because there's no there's no record in here fn. And if I get rid of the double double quotes like I had before, I still get a, a parameter value because fn is not a field in the table. So that doesn't work either. It's a variable I created in here. So what you have to do is now you have to say where first name equals and then put in here again your double double quotes, close that string and fn and quote, 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 <laughs> like that. What happens is this becomes the opening quote that closes this string. This is another string right here, and inside that string is just this. So now you get that, and <laughs> now it works. If it helps you to conceptualize this, replace these double quotes with a single quote, like that. And those single quotes are now what are used in the parameter for the actual string here. I know it's a little confusing, and really the best way to get around this is just to keep doing it. It took me a while to wrap my head around this too. I've been doing this for 20 plus years. And this is my full-time job. This is what I do all the time is teach access. So <laughs> it's still a little confusing to me sometimes. Don't feel bad. Just remember one more thing. If you're using dates, you have to use the pound symbols. All right, so if, uh, I think we got a customer sense field in here. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. There's the one downside to shrinking everything. Let's see here. I do have a customer sense field, 2020 and 99. Okay, so if I do less than 2000, I'll get just Bill Williams. All right, that's what I wanted to see. So if you wanna say, show all records where customer sense is less than, now you need the pound signs, and then inside the pound signs, you can go one, one, 2000, like that. And then run it, and there's just Bill Williams. He's the only one in here from less than 2020. Now, if you want to make this date value a parameter, all right, let's say fn is now a date. All right, and the date is going to be 1 1 2000. All right, you can come over here, and if you close this up and say fn, now that's my date, we run it, we still get no values. Why? Because we have to put those pound signs in the SQL as well, like that. And now there's our Bill Williams back. So even though you've even though you've delimited them up here and the and by setting the date and the variable, you also have to have those in here as well. And that's part of concatenation. Okay, I hope this helped. Um, it's just a review of a lot of different stuff that I cover in multiple different classes. I put links to all of them in my uh, in the description field below the video. Usually I do screenshots of them here, but I'm not going to make screenshots for all of them. Access Beginner 9 is where I cover the basics of putting strings together in queries. 
Access Expert 8 and Expert 25, I cover them more. And then in Access Developer 2 is where I start doing it with VBA. If you want to get your question answered, send it to me here, Tech Help page. I do read through all of them. I don't always have time to make little videos like this, but sometimes I'll get back to you with a quick email if I can. We are trying to promote a new Facebook group. If you're on Facebook, join the Access Learning Zone discussion group. There's a link to it. Uh, we're up to 232 members, and we just started this a couple weeks ago, so it's, uh, it's getting there. And that's where I found Brent's question from today's video. He posted it in the Access Learning Zone Facebook group. I know a lot of you aren't on Facebook, so we are looking for another solution as well. There's forums on my website, but uh, I'm, I, don't, I don't know if I'm going to keep them or not because I'm trying to get something with more features, and I don't really want to build all those features myself because I'd rather make more Access videos than work on my website. So I'm looking at a couple of different solutions. But so far, the group is working pretty well. There's me. There's my email. If you want to drop me a quick email, I can't promise a personal response to everybody. I do get a lot of email. But if your email does catch my eye, I might make a video out of it. There's all my other stuff. Blog, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. All right. Time for shameless self-promotion. Access Level 1 is free. There's a link, or you can find it in the description below. Three hours on YouTube. Watch it. All the basics. If you like it, Level 2 is just $1.00. If you want to keep learning beyond that, I do have a membership option available called the Learning Connection where you get one new class a week at a 50% discount. So that's pretty cool too. There's a link for that. All right, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Click the subscribe button and click that little bell. Ring the bell. Make sure you subscribe to all so you get notifications in your email and such when I produce new videos and post them up here on YouTube. And of course, thanks for watching and we'll hope to see you next time. Thanks for learning with AccessLearningZone.com.